Hi everyone. I'm about to undergo a medical diagnostic procedure. And I had created a vlog about the situation of getting one. <laughs> but I've decided, you know, I'm not in the end going to publish that vlog. I went ahead and got rid of it. And I'm just going to make a story time out of that part. And I'll actually vlog the day it actually happens. Not the whole day, but the the night. It's an overnight thing. I think what I'm going to do is introduce the situation with a story time and then actually do a vlog the night of. You know, I started this noting that there really weren't any vlogs, or at least I didn't find any vlogs, of somebody going on their kind of diagnostic journey to figure out what was going on with them from start to finish. And I was thinking I would create that, but... I'll just do it this way. I'll tell the story about what happened, how I got to this point, and then I'll actually vlog, you know, what I choose to vlog. And then, you know, between vlogs and story times, I guess I'm still kind of taking you through the journey from start to finish, but I'm not going to vlog everything. I just, I'm not going to vlog everything. <sighs> okay, let's start at the beginning. I don't think I have ever been the kind of normal kid, teenager, or adult who mommy and daddy put him to bed at 8 or 8.30 and they slept through the night. I regularly did not like to go to bed. I always wanted to like stay up late. And then I don't know when I started not being able to sleep through the night, but... If I could have had my way, I would have gone to bed at maybe midnight and then woken up like at six, seven, eight. I mean, who needs sleep anyway and or who needs to wake up at the ass crack of dawn? That's always either been my attitude or my body's attitude. Sleep just never really happened at quote unquote normal or regular times by the standards of quote-unquote the real world. <sighs> In the real world, my body doesn't like to be what it's supposed to be. That's a whole separate conversation for probably a whole separate video. This video is not about what my body did back in the day and what in the real world is not acceptable. This video is about what my body does now that in the real world is not acceptable. Namely, nowadays, falling asleep with the help of medication and then refusing to stay asleep until quote-unquote normal waking hours. And then, when normal waking hours come around, it passes out back into sleep. And I don't even feel it coming. And... I'm not even conscious that I've always been asleep. Um, in the worst incident that I know of, I thought I dozed off sometime during this hour. I was called in to meet with my boss at the time and her boss, and I was informed, yeah, not only did you doze off, you dozed off three times during that hour. Three. One, two, three. That's the day I was written up for falling asleep. The boss did not, you know, say it exactly that way. But the point was, I thought it was once, it was really three times. Let's back up a little bit. As a kid, I often tried to stay up late, wanted to stay up late. As an adult, I took part in a research study surrounding people who are totally blind and have no light perception and can't look out the window and know, okay, the sun's starting to set, you know, it's, be it's, it's becoming nighttime. And the theory is, the studies showed, I even helped do the research to determine that in people like that, there's something about that that screws up the circadian rhythms. 
So as an adult, I helped with the research studies that ended up proving that there is something called non-24 sleep-wake disorder. And blind people who don't have any light perception get it. Their circadian rhythms get screwed up because they don't know the difference between day and night. They can't look out the window and see the difference between day and night and or whatever effect sun is supposed to have. I, I don't know. They don't get enough sun to affect their circadian rhythms. I don't know. The point is there's a pharmacy out there that specializes a medication that is supposed to help with that. Seven years ago, I started taking that medication. I'm not sure at what point it stopped working as far as, well, I don't think it stopped working. Its job is to put me to sleep. I don't know at what point it became not sufficient to keep me asleep, but five years and two months ago today, I started working this job. Inconsistently throughout that time, I've had this problem where I don't always stay awake during the job. And there's a lot to say about this. Um, I could turn this video into a story about how People don't talk to me. If they see that happening, they go to the boss. And the boss, even the boss, doesn't come look at the situation and see it and talk to me in the moment. Even the boss either takes note of it or, of course, I just switched bosses. I don't know how my new boss is going to deal with it. Of course, ideally, he wouldn't have to because I would find out why medically I can't sleep through the night and do something about it. Or better yet, I'd quit this job and start a job where I could work from home. But even a job where I could work from home is not going to put up with that. Um, the point that I'm trying to make is... <sighs> It has inconsistently happened, I guess, throughout that time. I remember the first time it happened, the boss pulled me aside, told me, you know, we've noticed it. Um, and at that time, I thought, okay, maybe I need to start drinking tea or something. Well, I, I won't say I did that, started doing that like every day, but I did it for a while. And I thought the problem was solved. Um, I guess it wasn't. Again, people who see me in the wrong never talk to me, so I don't really remember it coming up again until I don't know. It may have come up again between the first time and the time I'm thinking of. I don't really remember it coming up again between now and the time I'm thinking of. Although it did, meaning the problem happened. Did anyone ever talk to me about it? I'm not sure. All I know for sure is that on December 8th, 2022, the boss and I were having a weekly meeting and there came a time in that meeting when the boss said, and that's not what they call me at work, but for the purposes of this video, she said, and you and I do have to have a serious talk. You have been observed sleeping on the job again. And I'm told that you were observed sleeping on the job during my extended maternity leave. To which I wanted to say, I don't believe you're being lied to. However, when they observe me, no one talks to me. So this is the first time I'm hearing about it. 
I didn't say that. I wanted to. I, maybe I should have. She said, We cannot continue to permit this. This is me officially giving you a warning that if this does not stop, we are going to have to start taking disciplinary action. You will have to be written up. And here's the way our disciplinary system works. I don't want to have to do this, but I can't tolerate this anymore. And I understood and I signed off on the like disciplinary plan or the, you know, whatever the, the paper that went in the HR file that said she's officially been warned that this must stop or she'll face disciplinary action. I drafted a note to my doctor and went to the doctor three weeks later and said, non-24 sleep-wake disorder is not my only problem anymore. We have to figure out what the other problem is and fix it. My doctor said, yeah, I'm going to e-consult with a sleep specialist because this non-24 thing, I'm prescribing the medication to help curb it, but I don't know enough about it to really know how to respond when the medication to fix that is not fixing all your sleep problems. The doctor e-consulted with the sleep team or the sleep clinic and the sleep clinic, I don't know if it was the doctor that I see or I don't know what doctor she e-consulted with, but whatever doctor she e-consulted emailed her back and said, we're not going to collaborate and hypothesize on this. You need to have your patient see one of us. So after what, two weeks to a month of waiting for the referral to come through to the sleep clinic. I called the sleep clinic as soon as the doctor's office called me and said, we need to have you go to the sleep clinic. But what I got was, yeah, we see the doctor referred you to us. We have to process the referral before we can schedule it. I don't know what that involves, but that took no less than two weeks, maybe even a month to get done. Finally, I get a call from the sleep clinic saying, we're ready to schedule you. And we were even able to set up a video a visit, which is always easier for me who can't drive myself into places. Although how much medical diagnostics can get done over video. <laughs> um, anyway, though, just to talk about what's going on and what do we do about it, a video was enough. So we set that up. Well, nothing like weather to get in the way. Three days before what should have been our video appointment, we had a huge ass snowstorm. Just it grounded everything. Even my company closed and my company never closes. We're a pharmacy. We're a mail order pharmacy. We don't close. Except when the roads get so impossible that driving at all is just dangerous. That's when they finally make the call. Okay, we're not going to we're not going to do this. <laughs> Um, so not only did my company make that call, I don't know if there's, I don't know if it's in HIPAA or if it's in the medical group that I work with's rules or what, but apparently if a doctor can't go into the office, they can't do appointments, not even video appointments, because that happened on a Wednesday, that Thursday I got a call from the doctor's office, the sleep doctor's office. I know you're scheduled for a video consult tomorrow or a video visit, I guess they called it. We're going to have to reschedule it. The doctor is expecting because of the weather, she's not going to be able to make it into the office. So we had to push it back. Like this was February 24th or something that we canceled. It was April 7th before the doctor finally had an opening in her schedule to see me. Before that time, whatever this problem is flared up and I I I was aware 
that I fell asleep at least once on one day. I guess the team didn't notice, miraculously. The next day, I was aware of it. Again, I guess the team didn't notice. The supervisor asked me. I mean, the team noticed the next day that the the previous day I had underperformed, but they didn't know they didn't walk in on me sleeping, I guess. Because the boss came to me and asked, you know, any idea why you might have underperformed? Like you <laughs> severely underperformed yesterday. Any idea what's up? And I said, well, I'll be honest with you, ma'am. What I think is up is I don't think I was awake the whole shift. I, I think there was a time during my shift that I passed out again. And at the time, she appreciated my honesty and, you know, wasn't, you know, I wasn't in trouble. But that was also the day that we had the, what I thought was a little doze. Really had three little dozes got written up. Finally, April 6th, April 7th, whatever that day was, rolled around and I had the video visit with my new sleep doctor. Fortunately, I happened to get a sleep doctor who was familiar with non-24, but who agreed that non-24 is not the only problem here. It could be sleep apnea. Let's rule out sleep apnea. I don't know if that was my idea or hers. <laughs> um, I... I didn't my dearest friend the father I should have had has sleep apnea and he's worried for a long time that I might have it too but I didn't think that was based on medical fact I thought that was just we love each other dearly and we want to make sure that each other stays alive for as long as we possibly can. And he's got sleep apnea, and when he has people that he cares about, he wants to make sure that they're healthy, including they don't have what he has. So, I really wasn't worried about it when he would mention it. But when this started happening, or when, when I became aware that this was happening to the extent that it was, I was like, okay, maybe it is sleep apnea. And if it's not, what is it? I mean, there's something going on here, and it's not non-24. I believe that I may well have non-24, but I also believe that there's a bigger problem at play, and that's what's going to get me either fired or... <sighs> I gotta stop saying that. I don't want to get fired. I want a career change. But I want the career change to happen because I say, look, this has been a great job for five years and six months, five years and three months, five years and however long it's going to be. But it is not my forever job. I have to count on somebody every time I have to go anywhere and you are not permitted due to pharmacy laws to let me do this job from home. Therefore, this is no longer the right job for me. I have found a job that I can do from home and I quit. That's how I want this job to end. And I don't have to go into that kind of detail either. I <laughs> I can just say this is me formally putting in my two weeks notice to resign from this job and handing them a, a letter that says all that. But the point is, that's how I want this to end, not... We've told you and told you and told you. We can't put up with you sleeping on the job. You've done it one too many times. You're out. This is the final write-up. The fourth write-up is fired. I'm sorry. I have to let you go. That's not how I want this to end. That's not how I want this to go. And we're not there yet. The fourth write-up is fired. This was the first write-up. But I don't want to get to the second, third, fourth. I want to find out what the hell's going on with me and fix it to the point where I can stay with this job until I'm good and damn ready to leave it. Yes, I hope that's in the next couple of months, but I want my body to allow me to do my job until I'm good and damn ready to stop. And then, when I do, I will be moving on to a different job, unless I just have come up with the perfect business plan or won the lottery or something. And when that happens, 
I need my body on board with me succeeding at that job. So if I've got sleep apnea, it's time to diagnose it. And if I don't have sleep apnea, we got to find out what the hell's causing this. Three o'clock in the morning, so what? I'm up. I'm ready to get going. Seven o'clock in the morning, time to get going to work. Oh, you know, I could go for a nap. Huh. 10, 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon when I'm supposed to be working. I guess I didn't need that sleep. It's alright, I'll just take it now. No, that's not alright! You're supposed to be working. Wake the fuck up. It's not someone's job to do that for me, but I wish somebody would instead of seeing it and going behind my back and saying, oh, she's knocked out again. <sighs> but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is I think I have sleep apnea, and if I don't, I have something going on. And so, so the sleep doctor and I agreed that going in for a sleep study at a lab was the best course of action. Yes, there are in-home sleep tests, but I don't have a live-in caregiver or even a, a sometimes caregiver that can come in and watch a video about how to put this machinery on and like oversee the study. As a whole, I don't need that kind of care. I'm not disabled to the extent that I need that kind of care. However, that's the kind of supervision I'm gonna need during this study. That's what makes it appropriate for me to go into a sleep lab and have someone do it for me. Where it's someone else's job to put the machinery on me, someone else's job to monitor it, someone else's job to take it off when it's done. So, scheduling it was <laughs> interesting. This scheduler had it in her mind that because I was blind, I needed a caregiver to exist in the hospital during the time that I was in there. I'm like... I'm not going to ask somebody who I don't like to have to ask for help anyway to take 12 hours out of their life to exist in a hospital with me just so I can have a sleep study done. I didn't necessarily say that to her, but that's that was my attitude about it. What I eventually ended up doing was saying, you know, if I can get some orientation to, like, the room... And as it, as it turns out, where the bathroom is compared to where the room is, because according to the documentation that the sleep lab sent me, any room you get is like 25 feet or less from a restroom. I'm like, if I can learn that 25 foot route, just if I can have someone talk me through that 25 foot route or walk me there, just give me an elbow and walk me down there. I don't need a person to exist in another room for 24 for 12 hours it's not 24 it's 12 hours waiting for me to have to go to the bathroom that's ridiculous i didn't say that's ridiculous but anyway i convinced her i didn't need that especially if she just put me in the same room not in the same room as a as a bathroom apparently the way this lab is set up it's not that way but put me right next door to the bathroom let me know where the bathroom is. I've got this. Yes, I have orientation and mobility problems, but not to the extent that I need someone to sit with me for 12 hours so that I can set foot out of the room. So once I convinced her of that, she looked at her schedule and said, well, the soonest we've got, now that it's May 1st, is June 11th, when there's an actual like official opening. Sometimes we get cancellations, but... Right now, we've got June 11th as an, as, a, as an opening. I'm like, all right, I'll go ahead and take that. That happened this past Monday. 
That takes us to yesterday. I saw my primary doctor and I was telling her about it and she said, you know, I realize there's transportation considerations and stuff, but maybe you should put yourself on the waiting list for a cancellation. If they have a cancellation and you can work out transportation, you know, five weeks is an awful long time to wait. I mean, there's a sense of urgency here. Your overall health is, you know, potentially compromised because of this. I would think it'd be appropriate to call them back and say, if you get a cancellation and there's any way I can get in sooner than that, let me know. So I went ahead and did that. And of course, this lab is gravely short staffed. There's one scheduler to deal with hundreds of calls a day, which is why every time I call this sleep lab, what I get is voicemail. So I leave a message saying, you know, if there's any cancellations, let me know. I can't promise that I'll be able to get transportation same day, but if there's any way I can get in any sooner than what I'm scheduled to get in, I think it would be a good thing. Well, I get a call back. Well, it's your lucky day. We've had a cancellation come up on Monday, this coming Monday. You want to you wanna come in? I'm like, yeah, if I can get transportation arranged. I was able to secure transportation and get this coming Tuesday off work. I'm going in for a sleep study Monday night. That brings us up to the present. And that brings us to the end of this story. As far as how I went from thinking I just had non-24 to now believing I have either sleep apnea or there's something else going on. I... The question of the hour is what's going on in my body apart from non-24 that I can't stay asleep through the night or stay awake when the rest of the world stays awake. Maybe it is true that in the real world, I'm not acceptable as far as what my body likes to do. But in the real world, you can't survive without money. And I've never been a person who had any interest in committing crimes to get the money that I wanted and needed. And so, I mean, there's a lot of things I wasn't raised to do or never, never been one to do, but that's where we are. What's going on that I can't stay asleep when I'm supposed to stay asleep or stay awake when I'm supposed to stay awake? I believe that 10 to 20% of it might be non-24. What's the other 80 to 90%? The first step to finding out is going in on Monday, Monday night, and having the sleep study done. I'm going to vlog this to whatever extent I can, and I don't know if what you're going to get is a story slash vlog or just a full-on vlog, but we will see. And I think that wraps up this video. Thank you for listen watching. <laughs> and I will talk to you in the next video.